Hey guys, Rob Boehner, producer at LiveX here, and today I've got the ATEM Television Studio Pro HD. I'm going to be unboxing this for you and telling you a little bit about why we love ATEM so much. You know, it sounds kind of funny because ATEM has gotten a bad rap over the years, but it's really undeserved because um, what we've really done with Blackmagic is really bought into the whole compendium of ATEM Live, which will give you all this functionality of color control, talkback, tally, and program return, and everything with uh, Blackmagic cameras. So like this studio in particular, and this video, uh, is being shot on the Blackmagic Ursa Mini Pros, which work great with the ATEM. So, we're gonna dive right into ATEM Television Studio Pro HD. They give you this uh, software and manual. You don't need that. Just uh, go ahead and go to blackmagicdesign.com support and you can get uh, the software, the setup software, as well as the uh, manual and everything like that. One quick note, Blackmagic, please stop using styrofoam. We have no way of recycling styrofoam. Cardboard would go a long way and can do just the, as good of a job of protecting the hardware. And with hardware built like this, who needs protecting? It is built out of a very solid piece of aluminum, I believe. Very solid piece of metal. Uh, all the way through, even this top portion here, uh, it doesn't feel like an ABS plastic. I think, I think it is actually metal. It's got some heft to it. Not terribly heavy, but it does have some heft to it. So I think it's very durable and you can like take this all over the country and not worry about it getting messed up in transit. Let's talk about the back for a minute. Basically, uh, much like the ATEM 1RU, about half 1RU frame that we saw come out last year or earlier in the year um, that was basically just had buttons on the front for you to switch, but it had all your I.O. in the back. The back of that is identical pretty much to the back of this. The only difference is, is that this has a full switcher panel on the front, whereas the other one just had like buttons on the front. Basically, you have a, a four pin XLR power or uh, IEC. Blackmagic doesn't give you a power supply, so make sure you have an IEC on order with your ATEM Television Studio Pro HD. This Ethernet port is for control. That is to tie it into your network to another computer. It could be a laptop just sitting next to this device that you are using the ATEM software with. Uh, so there's, there's two softwares. One does the setup where you configure everything and then the other one does the actual control. It looks similar to a switcher, but it's actually a software UI. Uh, the USB 2.0 ports is used for firmware and other configuration things, but not typically for control, so you're going to want to use the Ethernet jack for that. HDMI inputs for 1 through 4. It's kind of a bummer because I wish they would switch these. I know they think that the 1ME, um, the standard regular base ATEM, is more for consumers or prosumers rather who uh, don't have cameras with SDI outputs, so they, they put the HDMI right up front here. I wish that the SDI were uh, one through four and then the HDMI were uh, five through eight, but the HDMI works really well for bringing in like graphics feeds or um, a laptop feed or something, uh, projector feed, you know, anything that doesn't have a SDI output. Uh, and more often than not, uh, consumer cameras or prosumer cameras will only have an HDMI input, so that works well for that. Um, five through eight are your SDI inputs with uh, SDI outputs on five through eight. Now these can be used with the ATEM color control and uh, talkback tally, program return, all these features that they built in for live into their um, studio cameras and the Ursa Mini cameras uh, and the big Ursa, but the Ursa Mini Pros are what we're shooting this video on and uh, we are controlling the color direct from um, aux out on the our big ATEM 
We have a, a 12G SEI infrastructure in the studio where we can do 4K 60P. We run it in through a broadcast 2ME 4K ATEM panel and frame. So we're big on the ATEM products specifically for their live functions. Oh, one last thing to note here, we have uh, analog audio in, two XLR inputs, one TRS, uh, one TRS headphone output. Multi-view can be either SDI or HDMI, as well as a program out and a reference out. Uh, the remote is used for GPIO for uh, other control of macros and trace memories and stuff for PTZ cameras. The front of the panel really uh, is designed much like any other broadcast switcher out there, only shrunk down. Uh, as you can see, it's not a full-size T-bar, but it is uh, this little fader here. Doesn't feel all that great. It does have a little resistance. I prefer a T-bar, but you know, one of the things I think they wanted to do is keep it pretty slim and compact and easy for travel. And T-bars can break pretty easily when uh, you travel with them. So on the top row here, uh, we have talkback functions as well as color functions. And uh, this wheel will even control uh, some of the Da Vinci style color wheels inside of Atem. One of my favorite features of, of this unit and their um, cameras that they built out for live. Um, you have your aux preview here. You can cut into to one aux, you have one aux out. And then across, uh, these, are, these are all obviously levels, Y adjust. You have focus zoom iris, you can move it around uh, for your PTZ cameras, Atem supports uh, Sony Visca protocol for PTZs as well as Panasonic's protocol and they can control PTZ cameras directly from the ATEM itself. You don't need an additional controller for that, uh, which is really cool for those of you who use PTZs. Uh, across the top, this is all audio. Um, these are essentially your faders. You have two options, audio follows video or on. On means the audio is always airing. Audio follows video or AFV means wherever you cut, it will take that audio. Um, it will take in audio on all of its uh, inputs here, as well as the ancillary audio over XLR. You have one upstream key, uh, which key fill is in here. You can decide where your key fills are. And then you have two downstream keys, which also have the key fill feature as well. Um, you have DVEs. Uh, it looks like on this panel, I'm not entirely sure, but it looks like you have four DVEs that's over in this range, uh, which will allow you to do a full four box, which is this panel up here. Now these are all DVE uh, functions up here um, for how you bring Transitions also for how you bring the DVE on and how you get rid of it. So, you know, does it come in from the top right? Does it come in from the top left? Does it squeeze? Does it push down or up or, or you know, how, how does it work? Iris reveals, diamond wipes, stuff like that. Um, this is a lot to put on this part of the panel. I almost think they could have done away with that entirely and just let that be controlled over the software or in the menu system. Um, but it does give you really quick access if you wanna make a change on the fly. Other than that, uh, pretty standard across the top here, you have uh, your main sources on the bottom, which are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, preview program. And then you have your shift sources up here. So this is media player one, media player one key, media player two, media player two key. Background one, background two, black and bars. You know, you're obviously not gonna use black and bars very much, but you may use the background colors, which you can also uh, program via HSL color uh, control, uh, hue, saturation, luminance to get the desired color for your brand or for your show to use as a background for some of these DVE effects where you're squeezing a two box in or four box or something like that. It's pretty straightforward, no nonsense, hardware switcher, ready to go out in the field, very durable. I highly recommend getting your hands on one of these if you're in the market, fully contained in one frame, unlike the old one where you had a little one RU dummy rack that you then had to control off the software. This is a 
huge improvement over what they've had in the past. And when we saw it at NAB, we were one of the first ones to pre-order it, and we just got it in this week. So we're really excited, and uh, we hope you enjoy it too. I'm Rob Boehner, producer at LiveX. If you like this unboxing video, hit subscribe down below. Follow us on all our social channels at LiveX Production. And we really appreciate you taking the time to take a look at this with us today. Thanks, guys. Take care.